What causes a man to be gay? Now already, we can see what's going on here. People are automatically gonna be tempted to dislike this video. Already, because you've got your preconceived ideas about homosexuality. But I am someone who likes to look at the fundamental cause of things, not just simply, here's how it is, but I say, how to get that way. And what people want to say is, people want to try to figure out if people who are gay are born that way or not. I'm gonna give you my interpretation of reality. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is to perceive this and receive this with emotional intelligence and check out my theory and try to prove the theory itself wrong and not to be distracted by other things that might come up. But if you're gonna tear something down, tear down my theory and try to see if my theory has some possible credibility. Here we go. What makes a man gay? People want to say that, well, they're born that way, but I would argue that a baby can't be born gay because a baby does not have really defined feminine or masculine qualities yet. A baby is a baby. You don't see that. What you do see, though, is later on, as the child develops, you can start seeing certain traits that resemble more masculine, feminine as they start getting older. Now, I will agree. There are very young children who already exhibit gay behavior. And specifically, this video is talking about gay men. So let's just st stick with that subject. You will see young boys who, and it's not something that they like the color pink. It's not as simple as that. It's that they even kind of walk a certain way. And they kind of, they kind of talk a certain way too. And there's a documentary called Do I Sound Gay, which is made by a gay man. And he's, he himself said, it's interesting, he goes to, to speech therapy classes. Uh, he, or he, what he did as a kid, and he said so many gay men, he realized, also went to speech therapy as a kid because they had that lisp. And so he goes to uh, a, a, an accent uh, specialist uh, to help him learn how to sound like a straight guy. Uh, someone that actors go to, to to learn certain accents. This is not me stereotyping. This is this is a fact. There's a certain reason already, and he, a gay man himself talks about it. He has a documentary that I've watched. It, I don't know that it's currently on Netflix, but it's called Do I Sound Gay? So the fact is, early on, typically, boys start emulating women more so, more so than men. Why is that? Here's my theory. And it's the same, it's the exact same as my theory on why people become alcoholics, drug addicts, they suffer from major depression, they become bipolar, suicidal, all of these things. It's because a traumatic event happened to them that they never got to unpack and or they did not have a positive male role model in their life. To me, it's that simple. Every person I've ever met that was a gay man had, had a backstory. It was a very predictable one. It's the same way with any Marvel or, or a DC movie where you'd have, you'd have uh, the, the, the backstory. How did the superhero become that way? Or how did the villain become that way? What made them that way? Well, the way they became that way was by one of those events that I just named. I will tell you this, of all the gay people, the gay men I've ever met in my life, the first place, once you start hearing their story, you don't even typically have to ask, you'll, you'll start hearing the relationship with their parents, specifically their father. They had some kind of negative relationship with their father, whether he wasn't there, maybe they never knew their father, or he was there and he was abusive, whether it was physically or simply verbal or the, the way he treated their mother and abused her or he was overbearing and didn't let his son really make his own decisions and made, told him what he's gonna do and all that. And it was this negative relationship. And basically what happened is he rewired, the boy rewires his brain to basically sexualize what a man should actually be like. He has such a desire to have a good relationship with a man, he sexualizes it without ever realizing it. And therefore, by default, tends to connect more with feminine mannerisms. 
Because men and women think differently. They do. Uh, I, this is something I regularly talk about in my, in my videos. And that's why if you watch The Office, Andy Bernard is a perfect example of a, of a man who thinks like a woman. And when you see it in the context, it makes a lot more sense. But ultimately, I have yet to meet a, a gay man who could say this to me. And not, not that I don't have these, I don't have discussions with gay men about this. But again, once you get to know someone who's gay, they will tell you and you will learn what happened in their childhood that ultimately triggered this. Usually often had something to do with their father in a very negative, traumatic way, and they never had a way to deal with it growing up so that they sexualize the desire for a man. There are some, I'll try to think of some other examples that I've, I've seen over the years. I'll see a situation where, where maybe it was the mother. The mother was bipolar or she was depressed and it was so, it was so traumatic that even that could have triggered it. It could have, and I've seen multiple cases of this, the boy was always obese, like morbidly obese, to the point where girls didn't really see him as one of the other boys. They saw him as more of some kind of novelty. And because of that, he never knew what it was like to get positive attention from girls in the way that the rest of us at least got some kind of attention at some point. But they systematically were not seen that way. So ultimately, especially as they get closer to puberty, what happens is they never really had, I learned to identify, okay, well, this is how it's supposed to be. And then they themselves are, they sexualize men in the way that they never were seen that way by the opposite sex. So that's what I have observed. I have observed, I'll put it this way, and I have never found an exception to the rule. I'm always looking for the exception to the rule, but I've never once found an exception to the rule of, or even a person who says, you know what? I had a pretty decent childhood. My parents loved each other. My dad was, was a great role model for me. You know, I mean, they weren't perfect, but my parents were good. They, we had good communication. I, you know, there were rough times that happened in our life, but we got through it. We talked it out. We got through it. Um, and nothing traumatic happened and no i wasn't morbidly obese to the point where i wasn't perceived as a boy no i had a completely normal life it's just that i'm into guys not chicks i have yet to meet that guy now i'm not saying that guy doesn't exist but what i am saying is and i like to look at the generalization because it's important we, i like to look at patterns okay if most people fit a certain mode mold that i've described if that's the norm and we have to carefully find the exception of the rule, it reinforces the general rule. Even if there is, if it takes, if it's that hard to find the exception, it helps reinforce that that general rule or theory has some validity to it. So that's my challenge to you. As you observe, as you get to know gay men throughout your life, all you have to really do is listen. You don't have to ask. You're going to find out what happened to them. You're going to figure out what happened to them that they never got to sort out in real time before puberty started kicking in in those years. And it rewired their brain to sexualize men in the way uh, that they were lacking some kind of positive example and positive affection from a man. You know, and it goes back to, was it Freud? You know, the, the cliche, tell me about your relationship with your father. It still goes back to that that so many men end up sexualizing other men because they didn't have that positive role model, that positive example from a, from a man. And that's one of the reasons why I actually really like doing these videos, knowing that I'm dealing with younger men, because I know there's such a lack of positive role, role models and I want to be that to, to someone. Now, you could watch this video and say, Nick, everything you just said was garbage. That's fine, but at least I've challenged you to think because I think it, ultimately my theory reinforce, reinforces the importance of the value of positive role models in our lives. Because without them, I think it can have that effect. And again, let me remind you, this same theory is for people who are alcoholics, drug addicts, suffer from major depression, bipolar. It's those same people 
think of an alcoholic you know, a drug addict you know. Think of someone who suffers from major depression. If you know their life story at all, they had some kind of major traumatic event happen to them and they never got to sort it out in real time and never deal with it. So that they're filling, filling that hole in their life in a different way. And ultimately, men who become gay, this is the same backstory as that. I'm saying that there's a trend here. I'm saying it's the norm. And if we have to find so hard an exception, then it only reinforces my theory. I have a feeling most people will tell me I'm wrong and I'm prepared for that because I don't have to be right. But I think it is important for you to at least be challenged as I've shared this theory with you. Your comments belong right here.